welcome to this week's Our School, Our Future. I have with me today Michael Hemel, a fifth grader at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. Michael won District Student of the Year. We are so proud of you. But Michael, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, I'm the oldest of three. My brother's name is Andrew and my sister's name is Lindsay. They, we all attend St. Elizabeth and Seton School. Oh, wow. And you, do you like it? Yeah. You were telling me earlier you think Miss Kassman is very nice. Yes, she is very nice. And what do you like about St. Elizabeth? It's a family. Well, you know, a lot of people have said that, that mm -hmm. when I talk about St. Elizabeth, that it really does have that family feel. So you feel that too? Yes. Now let me ask you, what are some of the activities that you're involved in at St. Elizabeth's? What do you like doing there? Um, I mean, I was in student council. Oh, wow. And I serve mass. Oh, that's neat. Mm -hmm. And so do a lot of the kids in your grade serve mass? Yeah. Mm, well, that's nice. That really is giving of yourself for our faith. And could you tell me a little bit about the student of the year process? What was that like for you? Was it scary? Yeah, I was, I was <laughs> nervous. So t what was that like? What it did you was, do? I made an essay mm -hmm. and I had to send it in. Oh. And they, they looked at it and they only chose a couple of students to interview. Based on the essay, so yeah, it must have yeah. been an awesome essay. Yeah, yeah, and I got to be interviewed. The interview, it was, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't. No. But were you nervous for the interview? Yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Um, what do you think goes into being selected? Um, just who you are and if you're a good person and you, you have a lot of service in your parish. And so you serve Mass in your parish? Yes. Do you do other things in your parish too? Are you yeah. involved? What else do you do? My family is very involved in our parish. Oh, that's wonderful. My mom is like, she... She's at school a lot? Yeah. And what does she do when she's at school? Do you see her a lot? No. When, um, when I was a little girl, my mom was real involved too. And I didn't, no offense to your mom or to my mom, but sometimes when I got in fifth and sixth grade, I really didn't want to see them as much. <laughs> they were volunteering in the library. I'd like to see them once in a while, yeah. but I also like being with um, my friends. Yeah without my mom there. Mm -hmm. So it was fun. But you like seeing your mom there sometimes? Yeah. Well, that's nice. And do you all go to Mass there on Sunday? Yes. That's good. And sometimes you're serving. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So let me ask you, so when you came in for the interview, what was that like? What did, how many people interviewed you? Just tell me a little bit about that and what are some of the things they asked? They asked me what kind of you asked me. And there was three people. There were three people in mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. And they asked you about what kind of service you do? Yeah. Okay. And so how did, what did you tell them? What do you think made you win out of everybody else? And I was really confident. You were really confident? Yeah. Well, good, good. Now, at St. Elizabeth, what is your favorite subject? Uh, science and math. Really? Yes. Well, that's, that's great. And so you, when you take this, when you study science and math, do you think you want to do something with that when you get older? Yeah. What are you thinking about? Engineer. Oh, wow. An engineer. That gives you the opportunity to really make a difference in the world. Yes. So you want to build things? Yeah. Well, that, that, I think that would be just awesome. Well, let me ask you this. The school year is almost over. So what do you think you're going to do for the rest of the school year? But more importantly, what are you going to do for the summer? Um, I think I'm going to focus on exams to do good on them. Mm -hmm. And for the summer, I just want to hang out with my friends, go swim, really? go to the beach. You like the beach? Yeah. I like the beach, too. Do you know if you have any plans to go to the beach this summer? Yes. And so what, what beach do you go? you go to Florida or do you go somewhere else? Alabama. Alabama. Oh, by Orange Beach. Mm -hmm. and, oh, I love Orange Beach. That's my favorite beach. So I've, I've been there and um, it's just so much fun. Yeah. So it sounds like you're going to have a great summer. Yes. And then also we talked earlier about um, what do you want to do for high school? Well, I want to go to Brother Martin right now. Well, I tell you what, I think Brother Martin is such a wonderful school. And you know what I want to tell you, Michael? It seems to me that you have a wonderful family and that your family 
is a lot like mine was, or is a lot like mine. And, and when I was growing up, it was so nice having my parents involved in the school and showing me how to live my faith through service. And that's what your family does. Yes. And I have to tell you one thing, other thing. I think you, and talking to you earlier and having this interview with you, I can certainly see why you got Student of the Year. You are a special young man, and I thank you for being on the show. Thank you. And Michael, I have something I want to give you. This is a plaque stating that you are the district winner. Here you go. Do you want to hold it up? All right. Congratulations. And once again, thank you so much for being in our schools, our future. Thank you. And we will be right back with Kate Rush, an eighth grader at Archbishop Hannon High School. Open up your books to page 360. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Talking about inspirational quotes. You gotta believe in yourself. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Welcome back. I have Kate Rush, an eighth grade at Archbishop Hannon High School with me right now, and she is the Regional Student of the Year winner. And I tell you what, Kate, and I have to tell the audience, more importantly, you were at Mary Queen of Peace when I was the principal. Yes, I was. <laughs> so I am extremely proud of you getting this Student of the Year. Oh, thank you. And um, you're all grown, so it's just, uh, it's wonderful seeing you. And mm -hmm, um, just like I said, I'm so proud of you. But why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself, because it's been a while, like eight years. Um, so tell me a little bit about yourself and, and how you're involved in school. I'd love to hear about it. Well, I'm 14. It's my first year at Archbishop Hannon High School. That's exciting. Yes. I, I was born in Covington, and I've lived in the same house my entire life. So, uh, <laughs> I have two younger brothers, Billy and Ben. They're 11 and 6 now. And they're precious. Yes, they're adorable. <laughs> and they both go to Mary Queen of Peace. Um, at Hannon, I am extremely involved. I, I try to take advantage of as many clubs and opportunities as I can. Um, I'm on cross-country team and the track team. I'm in the Blackfriars theater group. I'm, a, I'm the president of my grade. I just recently got reelected. I'm very excited about that. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you. And let me ask you, what has been, you think, your favorite part of high school so far? Well, my favorite part of Hannon has definitely been the atmosphere because it's my first year and I've already been made to feel like a part of the family. I mean, they're all so welcoming and so supportive, especially throughout this process. I mean, they, they keep everyone up to date. <laughs> And I also love having the role models there because I, at Mary Queen of Peace, for a long time I was in the oldest group, but at Hannah now I'm the youngest and I get to look up to all of these seniors going off to college and I love knowing that one day I'll be in their position inspiring younger kids. Have you thought about college yet? <laughs> I, I try not to think about it because I know there's so many amazing colleges and opportunities out there, but uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm considering a few different ones. I'm talking to my mom. so. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you this. Tell me a little bit about um, your experience with Student of the Year and what that was like. Was it scary? <laughs> and just all of those things. Um, it, it was nerve-wracking at points, but I think it was also a very good learning experience and a self-reflective experience because in the very beginning, when I was nominated for my school, I had to make this binder containing all of my activities and grades, service projects, and then I had to write an essay um, talking about myself. And so I uh, put together all that information with my mom and I sent it off and I was hopeful that I wasn't really expecting anything. And then I was nominated for district. And I think that uh, throughout all of the interviews, I was made to feel very, very comfortable with the people I was talking to. It was, it was less like an interview and more like a conversation. So I think I really enjoyed the process even with all the nervous points. Well, you've been doing things like this, though. I remember, in, was it first grade? You were in first or second grade, and you got up at assembly, and you played the violin yes. for the whole school, mm -hmm. and you nailed it. I was <laughs> Thank thinking, you. whoa, you know, and I was, I was just so proud of you. So I think this is something that um, just in talking to people, your natural 
natural personality, which is just reeks of charisma, just Thank came you. out. And um, so let me ask you this. What activities outside of school do you think help in the, um, the student of the year process? Well, I'm a member of the Civil Air Patrol. I, I just reached my cadet airman rank. So Really? Yes. Uh, they, they really help you hone your leadership skills because you're put into situations that you wouldn't be if, if you weren't in that group. And you also get prepared for natural disasters. So if a hurricane ever came, I could go and volunteer and help people and rescue them, which is just amazing. It, it, um, it really it invigorates my sense of community and my sense of volunteerism. So I think that really helped um, in the competition, as well as violin, which, like you said, I've been playing since kindergarten. So it's the most challenging thing I do, but it's also the most rewarding because I know if I just practice, I will achieve the results that I want to see. So. That's, that's very true for the student of the year competition. I just have to go in with an open mind and be confident and then I can face my challenges. Well, that's wonderful because I think, um, I think you always do that quite well, at least what I've seen of you. And, uh, and being your principal in a rel relatively small school, I feel, like I, got to, I, I feel like I got to know you um, rather well. So let me ask you this. After winning at the district le level, you went on to win the regional level as well. How was the regional level process, and how was that different from the first process? Well, at the regional level, I had to um, do a writing sample in, a, in the room with all of the other uh, students who were competing, so that was definitely nerve-wracking, but it was, it was a lot of fun because I really enjoy writing, and the, um, the prompt was really uh, applicable to my situation now where I am, uh, so I got to talk about the relationships between students and their influences on their friends and their parents' influences and uh, how they can grow to be a better person because of that. And the interview process, I was interviewed by very many people compared to the three that I had at the district level. So that, that was also more nerve-wracking, but they, they made me feel very comfortable. So. Well, so you weren't real nervous then. You were okay. You, like I said, you've done so many things which lends itself to having to get in front of people. And you've always done that quite well. And you know, I just want to say um, kudos to your parents because <laughs> your, your parents have always been so supportive. And then of course, I, although I would like to say it was Mary Queen of Peace, <laughs> but I'm just teasing. Father Charlie would say the influence of Hannon. Oh so, yes, definitely. Um, we mm -hmm. all love Father Charlie. Mm -hmm. And I know he's extremely proud of you. So, um, so it, was, it was nice going to Baton Rouge and seeing all of that and being there and um, I was just so proud of you so very proud Thank of you, you. but to, I do have this I want to give it to you um, it is a little token if you want to hold it up it's a plaque Thank you. just so you can show everyone and it just uh, is from us to commemorate this this exciting I really appreciate award that. And, that, and that you have that um, and just to let you know how proud we are of you so congratulations Kate. Thank you. I'm just so proud of these two students, but join us when we get back. We'll have Dr. Raynell Houston, the new superintendent for Catholic schools. What if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. Welcome back. I am very excited and honored to have with me tonight the incoming superintendent of Catholic Schools, Dr. Raynell Houston. 
with you right now. We have been friends a long <laughs> time. We've worked together, and I have to say on a personal note, I am so excited for you, and I know that you are going to do a wonderful, wonderful job as superintendent, and I am here to support you and help you in any way I possibly can. So please be assured of that. Thank you so much. But for the benefit of our viewers tonight, could you please tell them about your background in history and education? Yes, so I have been an educator for over 20 years. Um, doesn't seem like it. time flies when you're having fun, I guess. <laughs> um, I started as an elementary school teacher and I taught elementary school and middle school and um, then went on to teach at the college level. I've taught um, at the University of Holy Cross where I think we initially met um, for 12 years in the Department of Education, taught at Southeastern for a year prior to coming to the Office of Catholic Schools. So I'm extremely excited about being in the Office of Catholic Schools and leading the office as the next superintendent. Now, how do you think your previous endeavors in education have helped prepare you for this role? You know, I think as I reflect on all of my professional experiences, I think every one of them have prepared me in some way, whether it was teaching in um, a suburban school in Baton Rouge or in an inner city school in Shreveport or in a rural area in South Plaquemines Parish. I feel like each of those experiences have contributed to my, um, my abilities and my characteristics as a leader, which have prepared me ultimately for the position. Well, let me ask you this, and I know the answer to this very well, but mm -hmm. like I said, for the sake of our viewers, so how are you transitioning from associate to assume the superintendent's position? Well, you know. <laughs> I know. You know, we have a plan in place, um, a great plan, where um, I am taking on little, little by little, more, more and more additional responsibilities that are responsibilities of the superintendent. So while doing my job as associate superintendent, with the support of all of my colleagues in the Office of Catholic Schools, and with your support, the superintendency role, uh, we are making that transition. It's very busy, very hectic, but it's so enjoyable and I'm having a great time. So let me ask you, what are some of the things that you are most excited um, about implementing when you become superintendent? Uh, just about becoming superintendent. Well, one of the things that I'm most excited about is something you started um, last year, the Special Needs Initiative. Um, you know that it's near to my heart because I have a daughter who has Down syndrome and I just am super excited that so many of our schools are excited about creating programs that are innovative and that meet the needs of a variety of learners. Mm -hmm. So that really, really excites me. I'm also looking forward to collaborating with all the school leaders and with others in the archdiocese. You know, as associate superintendent, I've had my little areas of expertise that I focused on and that limited me somewhat as to who I worked with at different times, but I'm excited about being able to work with everyone in the diocese, with other ministries, and with all of our school leaders at the high school level and elementary. Well, I think you bring up two excellent points, and mm -hmm. I think as far as the special needs initiative, as you have shared with me, um, our schools already try so hard to yes. do so much, but expanding yes. it is wonderful. And of course, St. Michael's and Holy mm -hmm. Rosary, I mean, they'll always be a place of course. for, um, for St. Michael's and, and Holy Rosary. But it is exciting mm -hmm. that schools are going out of their way to mm -hmm. expand the programs they have and in, yes. some, case, in some cases put mm -hmm. new programs in place. And so mm -hmm. I thank you for that initiative being near and dear to your heart because you know it's near and dear to mine. Yes. But of course, it's very near and dear to our wonderful Archbishop, Archbishop, Amen. Archbishop yes. Amen. So that's, uh, you know, just to see that mm -hmm. go to really come to light uh, mm -hmm. is, is most exciting for me. And I'm so thrilled that you're going to continue that. The other thing, um, you are a great collaborator. Mm -hmm. I've worked with you both at Our Lady of Holy Cross, yes. now the University of Holy Cross, <laughs> and in the Office of Catholic Schools. And I just think that you have a way about yourself which lends itself um, to collaborating with others. Mm -hmm. Just your personality, mm -hmm. the way you're so inclusive of others. Yes. And so I think in both of those endeavors, you're going to be extremely successful. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate so that. I think that'll be a really good thing. So let me ask you, one thing I know about you is that you have very strong faith. Mm -hmm. So how has this faith, um, how has your faith helped you throughout the process? And how have you relied on your faith? Well, I have to say this goes back to 
my childhood and being raised in a very faith-filled home. My parents, my grandparents were all devout Catholics and very, very dedicated to the faith. So I grew up in a household where, you know, we were in church like every time the doors opened, you know, whether it was cleaning church, my mother was a lector and a Eucharistic minister, my father's a Eucharistic minister, CYO, catechisms, you know, it would, whatever the situation was, we were always there. And so my faith is, has always been the center of my being. It's the center of my life and I can't imagine doing anything without it. So throughout this process, um, I've had to trust God and have faith that he was working all things out for my best interest and for the best of the ministry. Um, so that really, that was, that was um, a test of faith, I guess, if you will. Um, and I'm glad that I have been strong in my faith in him. Well, that's wonderful. Now, let me ask you, what, who are some of the people um, that have influenced you, you think, as you've gone through this process and getting you where mm -hmm. you are today? Oh, my parents, of course, first and foremost, as my first teachers. And then every educator, I think I can look back at different points in my elementary, middle school, high school careers, my college careers, and then in my professional career where I've had educators who have tapped me on the shoulder for different things and said, hey, I believe in you, I'm confident in you, you can do this. Um, and just help me to become who I am today. And I just wanna take a moment to say thank you to you for your leadership and thank you for the opportunity that you've given me in the Office of Catholic Schools and you have been a true inspiration in more ways than one personally and professionally so I want to thank you for that. Well you're very welcome and I thank you so much for being here today. Um, I greatly appreciate everything that you have done in our office mm -hmm. and um, I think you're going to do a great job and as I said earlier I pledge to you um, my support. Now, before we go, mm -hmm. if you could just say, what can parents expect if they want to reach out to you or anything mm -hmm. like that? How can they get involved and, and give you their ideas and thoughts? Well, like you, I mean, I plan to be very accessible. Um, parents can call the Office of Catholic Schools. They can email me. Um, they can call my cell phone. <laughs> All of that information is on our website. Um, and I welcome the feedback. Um, we actually have a survey out for the parents. Sarah McDonald and I have been working on a survey um, just to get more information from parents, more feedback, um, to help kind of guide where we're going in, in the future as we make the transition into the new leadership. And you're also meeting with all the principals to get their input. Yes, I'm so excited. Um, beginning of June, we're meeting with all the elementary and high school principals and we want to get their input. We want to know what the Office of Catholic Schools is doing very well and what we can do to improve our service to them because as you stated when I came into the office we are a ministry of service. We are there to serve our school leaders, our families, our parents, our students, our teachers. So what are we doing well and what can we do better? Yeah. Well Raynell, I wish you the best of luck and I know you're going to do great. Archbishop Amen has confidence in you <laughs> as do I and I think um, all of the leaders in the field and, and parents, I think people feel really good about you coming on board. Thank and you. as I said, anything I can do, please let me know. Oh, I will be ringing your phone. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I would also like to thank WLAE. This is my last episode of Our Schools, Our Future, and they have allowed me the opportunity, honor, and privilege to come here and let you know about the wonderful things that are happening in Catholic education. So WLAE, Thank you. It has been a joy and honor to be here. And once again, good night.